It's Platt, and today we get the Blue Ribbon. That's next to Platt's Beer of the Week. So the uh, particular day beer we have today is another classic all-American brand, that is PBR Peps Blue Ribbon. Uh, a little background of uh, Peps and uh, how this whole thing started. Uh, it originated when Frederick Peps and his family moved to the U.S., in 1848, I think he was like 12 years old at the time, uh, they moved over here and uh, to live a better life. Now, like all great brewers at the time, one of the best ways to get uh, ahead in the brewing world is to marry into it. And that's what he did. In 1862, he married a young lady, Maria Best. Her father owned Best Brewing Company. Best Brewing Company was founded uh, years earlier in 1844 in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Uh, like, all, again, all good brewers, he jumped right into the new family business. And by 1867, uh, Mr. Bess had decided to retire and let young Frederick and other family members take over. Now, one of the first big breakthroughs for Paps actually occurred in Chicago, the uh, Great Chicago Fire of 1871. Uh, that fire destroyed 19 major breweries in Chicago. At the time, Chicago was probably the biggest beer producing city in America, but after those fires, the brewing shifted toward Milwaukee. And uh, still to this day, Milwaukee is considered one of the great beer cities in America. And that's partially due again to that Chicago fire. Companies like Paps thrive. Well, after that, and uh, just continued success, eventually by 1890, Frederick decided to change the company name and their letterhead from Best Brewing to Paps Brewing. Now, one of the quick questions you may ask is, well, where does Blue Ribbon come from? What's the story behind that? And there's not a solid uh, story behind it, but supposedly, uh, I guess the myth, urban legend, what you uh, would want to call it, is that Paps won uh, America's Best Beer, or the Blue Ribbon, in the 1893 World Columbian Expo in Chicago. Now, what the World Columbian Expo and Chicago have to do with each other I don't really know, but uh, at the time this was a big event. Uh, just a little research I've done. This is similar to the World Expos and World's Fairs that were big in the late 1800s till about the mid-1900s. I don't even know if there's a World Fair anymore. But one of the things uh, about those, especially in that time, late 1800s, early 1900s, is you can go back and find older bottles of spirits, older bottles of Jack Daniels, I believe, Jim Beam, and a couple others, they would talk about gold medals they won at the 1896 World Fair, the 1901 San Francisco Fair, something like that. And those were kind of the precursors to the spirit competitions, beer competitions that we have today. And again, supposedly they won a blue ribbon, thus past blue ribbon. Now, uh, today the company's currently uh, headquartered in San Antonio. I believe they might brew out of the old... Uh, Pearl Brewing. We talked about this a little bit with the Lone Star video. Uh, and in between Milwaukee and San Antonio, the company had a stop in Los Angeles. So headquarters have kind of moved around. Uh, the company today, besides just brewing PBR, has uh, several other products. They have a beer called uh, PBR Extra. That's 6.5% alcohol by volume. I think it's just a bumped up mash bill. I don't, it's not an ice beer or anything different like that. Uh, they have another product that I found very interesting. I had to do a double take the first time I saw it because I kind of didn't get the concept. PBR hard coffee. Uh, I originally thought they were trying to get into, you know, you have the Starbucks iced coffee drinks. I thought they were trying to get in that business, but this is actually a hard coffee, 5% uh, alcohol by volume. Interesting concept. I'm not much of a coffee drinker though. Uh, next, they also have PBR hard seltzers. There's a couple of different flavors. Uh, their hard seltzer are a little higher in ABV, uh, 8%. I don't know if this is to kind of get into the more four loco ish type niche or not. But again, the, the crowd they're catering to anyway probably works at a certain level. And last but not least, the product I did not know they were doing, and I'm going to have to find a bottle of this just to take out. They now have PBR whiskey. That's right. PBR whiskey, 80 proof white whiskey or an unaged whiskey. Uh, on the website, really didn't go into a lot of details. I'm just going to assume they've taken their basic PAPS mash bill and not hopped it, fermented it, and just distilled it. Um, 
This beer is an adjunct lager, so besides barley, you're probably going to have some corn or some rice. So, and again, they're not using the term bourbon, so it's just kind of a generic grain bill or whatever. But I'm going, going to have to check it out. It sounds like an interesting idea, and I wonder if other brewers might want to go this route. It'll be interesting to see. Well, before we try out this beer, though, let's check out the stats. So normally this part of the video, I either kind of explain a uh, related topic to the beer I'm talking about, or maybe I go over the style itself, you know, what have you. But today I, I thought I'd do something, something a little different. I want to kind of ask an open question to you guys out there. Would love to hear comments back. And something I've been kind of opining about uh, recently and is, uh, what is up with beer tub girls? Is that something that still exists these days? Uh, 30 years ago, when I was in college, starting to go to bars, started bartending, uh, especially in Honky Tonks down in Texas, you had two or three main bars out, you know, in, in there, but then you had the beer tub girls near near the dance floor or whatever, and they were generally, you know, an adorable young lady, maybe in a pair of Daisy Dukes or some kind of tank top, and it was just a horse trough full of ice, and, and you had, you know, Bud Coors Miller, maybe down in Texas, you had Lone Star in there, and you would go buy a beer from the young lady. She'd pop it, and there you go. Uh, always kind of liked it because it's just beer, so you know you generally get that transactions fast. It was always cash only, so you didn't have to worry about credit cards and stuff. You know that process. Also, no one's ordering my ties or this, that, and the other. Um, if you're a gentleman like me at the time, you know whatever the beer was you gave her, whatever, so keep the change. So you're not dealing with the change. So you, you were able to turn people over a little faster than what was happening on the main bar. Also, too, back then, uh, generally men were behind the bar and the girls were in the beer tubs or cocktailing. So either you go look at that ugly bartender or the pretty girl. Um, also, too, uh, if you were a drunken pervert like we were <laughs> back then, you would get your beer, kind of work around the back tub, uh, back side of the beer tub and see if it looks any different back there, if you know what I mean. Uh, but I always thought it was a great idea. Uh, again, some people just wanted beer. You know, you get it in and out. Um, the beers were always ice cold, which is kind of cool. And also, too, uh, again, like I said, back then, things were a little different. You had men behind the bar, women cocktailing, maybe do the beer tubs. Um, even back then, they were starting to kind of push, all right, let's get the pretty girl behind the bar. But a lot of times, they didn't have the experience. And the beer tub was kind of a way to kind of build them up, you know, get them to pop bottles, get them used to IDing, making change, dealing with a drunk. Maybe after a while you threw in a, a thing of jello shots for the cell or maybe a ball of Jaeger, you know, they could do single shooters, you know, the tube shots, which is another thing that used to be a big deal. But I was I always thought that was a cool idea. And if it, if I'd ever owned a honky tonk, there would definitely have been a beer tub girl. But out here in Vegas, you just don't see that anymore, and I don't know if it's much of a thing anymore. So I'd love to hear your feedback. Are there beer tub girls out there? Does anybody miss them? Uh, is that something that should come back, or is just something for old farts like me? Well, enough about the beer tub girls. Let's try a cold beer. All right. All right, nice, nice little golden color, a fairly light gold, but a decent color, plenty of impervescence, got a decent finger head. Uh, not much on the nose, Sarah. This is a pretty simple beer. Let's give her a try. Not bad. Um, a little sweetness. Um, not as much sweetness as some of these other adjunct beers. I will say this. Uh, this is a pretty light body, real kind of easy drinking beer. Um, got a little crispness to it. Now, I don't think it's the hops, but I just, um, like I said, though, it's not, it's not a sweet beer, though. Yeah, some of these beers, you could taste the adjunct in there. Um, it's just a really kind of lighter, crisper beer. There's no hot bitterness or nothing like that. They, um, I believe the IBUs are 10, so there's not, not much in there, but 
also too, again, this is a lighter malt bill, so it's still kind of somewhat balanced. Um, this is definitely a perfect summertime, uh, 4th of July type beer, red, white, blue. You may hear in the background, there's, there's no gunshots. <laughs> it's just fireworks. There's, don't worry, you know, no, one's, uh, no one's in danger. Again, a great class example of these old American uh, premium, quote unquote, premium beers from back 100 years ago that, uh, you know, assembly workers and the guys working at the Ford plants and the mines and stuff like that. This is what, you know, they would have drunk back then and everything and uh, college kids can still enjoy today. Well, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please subscribe down below. Also, please like the video because it lets YouTube know we're putting out good content. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or beers that you would like me to try, because uh, supplies are starting to come back now, so hopefully we can find some of those beers, please leave me in the comment section, or you can always contact me on the Twitter page. Till next time, bottoms up.